right, guys, we're back again with Bam This Book, um, and the chapter is entitled 24 Farts. Mr. Vaughn's class was in the library. We were supposed to be looking for new books to read, but the BBLL board had other plans. Rebecca, Danny, and I met back in the stacks as far away from the mirror, Mrs. Jones, as we could get. The first order of business was to add Trey McBride as our newest member. Trey? Danny asked. Trey was there and looking embarrassed. He was the one... He wasn't the one banning books. It was his mom, I said. And you know how you were asking me what we do next? He's got a plan. I move that we add him as the newest member of the BBLL board. Our challenge response coordinator. That got Rebecca and Danny interested. He was voted in unanimously. So here's what we're going to do, I told them. We're going to ban every book in this library. Rebecca and Danny looked as stunned as I had been. Ban every book, Rebecca said. Shh, called Mirror Mrs. Jones. No talking! I dragged the BBLL board into one of the library meeting rooms where we could talk and explain the plan. When Rebecca and Danny got it, they liked it. I knew they would. Danny flicked his hair out of his eyes. But how are we going to find something wrong with every book? Trust me, Trey said. Books have been challenged for all kinds of crazy reasons. I looked up some challenges on the internet. The easy ones are anything that's got witchcraft or supernatural stuff in it. Anything with bad words, anything with gay characters, anything with violence, and anything with the mention of sex in it. He blushed when he said the last one. And we all found somewhere else to be looking. That's a lot of books, Rebecca said, but not nearly all of them. But look at this, Trey unfolded a piece of paper on the table. The stupids got challenged because it reinforces negative behavior and might encourage children to disobey their parents. Here's a riddle book that got banned because it made kids who couldn't figure out the riddles feel bad. My teacher as an alien got challenged because it portrays the main character as handling a problem on her own rather than relying on others for help. Here's the destruction of property teaches kids to lie, a real downer, anti-family, lewd, twisted, too mature, too immature, bad grammar, promotes poor nutrition, includes the word fart 24 times. Danny snorted. <laughs> what book is that? Walter the Farting Dog. Oh, sure, Danny said, and we all nodded. Look, the point is, once we ban one book, somebody somewhere can find a reason to ban every book, I said. I looked at Trey and they nodded. Even Where's Waldo has been banned because someone found out, found one little woman sunbathing face down with her top off, Trey said. We just have to start thinking like people who see stuff everywhere that bothers them. So, I just have to pretend to be my grandmother, Rebecca said. Or my mom, said Trey. A lawsuit waiting to happen. Once we got into looking for reasons to ban books, it was kind of fun. Anything with witches, wizards, jack-o'-lanterns, demons, or gods, gone. No Harry Potter, no Percy Jackson, no Artemis Fowl, no Chronicles of Narnia. Anything about sex or the human body or reproduction, gone. Anything with gay characters in it, gone. This one said, oh lord, in it, Danny said. My mother wouldn't let me say God's name unless I was praying. Ban it, I told him. The book has the word scrotum on the first page, Trey said. I looked at the cover. It was a Newbery winner. Yeah, just about anything with one of those medals on it, you can find some reason to ban it. Fill out a form, I told him. Shh, no talking, Mirror Mrs. Jones yelled. We worked quietly and quickly all week long. That book about the Civil War? Too violent. The book about the Holocaust? Too depressing. That book about diseases? Too scary. A book about lions? Too gory. Every night I took home a stack of requests for reconsideration forms to add to the growing pile in my bedroom. We were going to bring them all to this next school board meeting. Really put on a show when all the TV cameras would be there. But we only had four school days left and lots more books to ban. Luckily we had Rebecca. She was the one who really shone when it came to challenging books. If ever there was a book we really couldn't imagine anybody banning, Rebecca could always come up with a reason. I think it was all the time she spent practicing to be a lawyer. The Lorax? 
that Libius, the Lorax portrays lumberjacks and the timber industry as an, in a negative light. Good night, Moon. The mouse in the room is a health code violation. The red balloon is a choking hazard. And look at this picture of the illustrator on the back. He's holding a cigarette that encourages kindergartners to think smoking is cool. Oh, and don't get me started about Amelia Bedelia. She clearly has Asperger's syndrome, and yet children are encouraged to laugh at her? What kind of message is this sending? The library is a lawsuit waiting to happen, Rebecca told me. There was a gleam in her eyes as she said it. Um, Rebecca, do you remember where we're doing this as a prank to prove a point, right? Not actually to do it? Right, of course, Rebecca said. She looked a little sheepish, but went back to the book challenging with gusto. Danny filled out a form for Frog and Toad, our friends. What's wrong with Frog and Toad? I asked him. They're a gay couple, he said. Oh, come on, I said. They are not. They're just friends. That's what you say. Danny told me with an evil grin. To me, it's subversive promotion of gay lifestyle. And that was it, wasn't it? All the book challenges, the real ones, were because one person saw a book in a different way than someone else, which was fine. Everybody had the right to interpret any book the way they wanted to. What they couldn't do was tell everybody else their interpretation was the only interpretation. Three days later, we had the request for a reconsideration forms file filled out for 500 books. There were lots more books than that in the library, of course, but it was the best we could do, even with Rachel's lawyer superpowers. 500 book challenges would still look great on TV, though, and make our point for us. We were ready, and then disaster struck. And by disaster, I mean my little sisters, which amounts to the same thing. Embracing the chaos. That afternoon, I embraced the chaos at home. I danced with my dad as he sang the marriage of Figaro. I played chase with Flotsam and Jessam, and not even Alexis doing ballet in our room and Angelina running around on all fours like a horse bothered me. Before dinner, I sat down at the kitchen table and plowed through my homework without being told to, and I didn't even mind doing fractions for math. Nothing could ruin my good mood. Tomorrow night, Rebecca and Danny and Trey and I were going to show the school board how stupid they were for banning books. I, or we were going to show everybody. When it was time for dinner, I cleaned cleared my books and took them back to my room. Then I passed Angelina's room. I had to stop and shake my head and wonder. Angelina had turned her bedroom into another stable, but this one was crazy. There was shredded white recycled paper, pretend hay everywhere, on her bookshelves sticking out of her dresser drawers, in her bed, more than I'd ever seen before. She was going to howl when mom and dad made her clean it up, but the tantrum she was going to throw later didn't even make me want to run away. I didn't want to be anywhere else tomorrow. I didn't want to be anywhere else tomorrow night. But it did remind me there was one small detail of our big plan for the school board meeting I hadn't covered yet. I need a ride to the school board meeting tomorrow night, I said at dinner. My parents looked across the table at each other, talking to each other without talking again. Are you sure that's such a good idea, Amy Ann? Mom said. I slumped in my chair. That is what they always said when they disagreed with me. Like, I would change my mind if they just thought, if I just thought about it more. But I thought about it plenty, and I said so. You said you wanted me to stand up for myself more, I told them. But that I had to do the right way. But I had to do it the right way. Well, the right way is to go to the school board meeting and to tell them that banning books is wrong. Mom and Dad looked at each other again. I could see them waffling. You said it yourself you didn't agree with the book banning, I said. If nobody goes there and says anything about it, then they'll just keep doing it. Dad sighed. Tomorrow's night's awfully busy, he said. Alexis has ballet, Angelina has book club. Alexis always had ballet, and Angelina can't even read. They can miss one night. My sister inter erupted. My sisters erupted. I can't miss a single practice, Alexis protested. Mrs. DuPont says missing just one class. I can too read. I can read chicka chicka boom boom. Angelina said, and she launched into reciting it to prove her point. Enough, enough, Dad told them. You're both excused. Alexis started to argue again, but Dad assured her he would figure everything out and sent her away. She stomped off to our room to use my bedpost as a ballet bar, and Angelina wandered off singing Chicka Chicka Boom Boom song. Mom leaned down and rubbed her forehead. I suppose we asked for this, she said. There are going to be television cameras there tomorrow night, Amy Ann, Dad said. Are you sure you want to do this? I knew what that meant. 
I hadn't gone up to the podium the last time he'd taken me, when there was almost nobody there. There were going to be lots more people there tomorrow night and lots more watching at home on TV. A little monster started gnawing in the insides of my stomach, making me cringe. But I wasn't going to be a good girl and stay quiet. Not this time. I nodded, I was sure. All right, Mom said. We'll find a way to get you there. I breathed a big sigh of relief. Everything was set for our big night. I promised Trey I'd call him later, but first I wanted to add a few more requests to reconsideration forms to the big box I had kept in my room. And when I got there, the box was gone. Disaster. I panicked, looking under my bed, on the bookshelves, in my backpack, but the box wasn't in any of those places. I remembered very clearly leaving it on the floor beside my bed, and now it wasn't there. I marched up to Alexis, who was holding onto my bedpost and doing ballet exercises. Where are my requests for reconsideration forms? You're what? She asked, still mad about me suggesting she could miss a ballet class. The big box of papers that was here, right beside my bed, before I went to the kitchen to do my homework, I told her. Oh, that, she said. She swung her leg in a wide circle. I moved it so I'd have room to practice my rond de jambe. Where did you move it? Mom's office, she said, with all the other boxes of paper. I tromped down the hall to the office, exercise room, guest bedroom, storage room, mad that Alexis has touched my stuff. The box was there, just like she had said it would be, but it was empty. Alexis, I yelled. Alexis, what'd you do with the request for reconsideration forms? Alexis came out of our room. I told you I put them in mom's office. The box is here, but it's empty, I told her. Well, it wasn't when I put it in there. And that's when I realized where the empty box was sitting. Right beside the shredder. No, I said, no, 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 no. Mom came into out of the living room. What's all the yelling, she asked. I ran past her into Angelina's room where she was nestled down in a huge pile of shredded papers like a horse asleep in hay. I snatched up a handful of the shredded papers and yanked it apart, trying to read what was written on the thin, thinly little, little strips. Hey, that's my hay, Angelina yelled. I grabbed another handful and another, and there were full of chopped up black typewriting and handwriting scrawled in blue and black ink at the top of one were the letters R-E-Q. At the bottom of another was the end of my signature. Grr, no, no! That's mine, Angelina screamed. That's mine. You can't touch it. It's mine. I threw the shred of paper on the floor, grabbed Angelina by the skirt. This isn't recycled paper. You shredded up my request for reconsideration forms. Angelina wailed like I had hit her, which only made me want to more. But before I could do anything else to her, mom and dad and Alexis were in the doorway. What's going on here? Dad said. Everything's ruined, ruined. She shredded up all our requests for reconsideration forms. That was the whole point of going to the school board meeting tomorrow. Our whole plan was it took us a week to fill out all of those, and now they're ruined. I kicked at the pile of shredded paper, sending them flying in the air like snow. Angelina dropped to the floor and sobbed. I hate you, I screamed to her. I hate all of you. I hate this stupid house. I hate everybody in it. Amy Ann, Mom said. Alexis and the dog sank back from me as I ran past my parents and down the hall to my room. That was it. I was done. I was leaving. I pulled the little suitcase I used when I went to Granny's house out of my closet, threw it on the bed, tossed a shirt, tossed in shirts, skirts, underwears, and socks, and my favorite stuffed animal, the little statue of Belle I bought at Disney World last year, a reading medal I'd won in second grade. What little money I had left over from the BBLL book buying account and a few of my favorite books, including from the mixed up files of Miss Basil E. Frankweller. I didn't know where I was going, but I didn't care. So long as I was nowhere near my awful house. Amy Ann is packing her suitcase, Alexis yelled from our doorway. She looked frightened. Behind her, the dogs paced nervously, their tails down. Good, I thought. I hope they all missed me when I was gone. I zipped my suitcase, dragged it down the hall. I'm running away, I announced. Alexis started sobbing behind me, but mom and dad didn't cry or stop me. They just made me madder. I stomped down the hall towards the front door, but Angelina came flying out of her room and wrapped herself around one of my legs. No, no, Amy Ann, don't go. I'm sorry I used your papers. I'm sorry. Don't go, she cried. I tried to kick Angelina off, but she was too big. I dragged her along like I was wearing a ball and chain. Angelina wailed and clung to me tighter. Dad crossed his arms and leaned against Angelina's doorframe. Didn't you think you're overreacting just a little bit, Amy Ann? I stopped. I had so much I wanted to say to that. To say to all of them. The good girl, Amy Ann, would have said it in her head. But I was done being the good girl, so I said it out loud. 
No, I said. No, I'm not overreacting. I'm the one who's always has to do things. I don't want to do. Everybody else will be happy. It's Amy Ann set the table. Amy Ann, let your sisters use your books as fences. Amy Ann, let your sister use your bed. But when I want something, it's Amy Ann, just be a good girl and let it go. I'm tired of sitting on the sunny side of the car because Alexis is too hot. I'm tired of eating pudding for dessert because Angelina has to have the last cookie. I'm tired of always watching My Little Pony instead of Little House on the Prairie. I'm tired of doing my homework in the bathroom because Alexis has turned my room into a ballet studio and you're watching TV in the living room and Angelina is using the kitchen table as a pony stable. And I'm tired of people moving my stuff and shredding my papers up just to make fake hay and ruining everything. I peeled the crying Angelina off my leg and pushed her to the wall. Why do you think I pretend to be in clubs and stayed late after school every day? I threw it at my parents. Because I hate this house and I hate everybody in it. I marched down the hall before Angelina could latch on again and the dog slinked out of my way. No one said a word as I slammed the door behind me closed. Run away. I had to make it. I had made it as far as Four Lane Road outside of our subdivision when Mom found me. She pulled up alongside me in the car and rolled down the window. Amy Ann, come home, she said. No, I said. Where are you going to go? To Rebecca's house, I told her, even though I just thought of it and I didn't know how to get there. All I really wanted to do was get as far away from my house as I could. A car honked at Mom for sitting on the right lane and she drove ahead and pulled into the next driveway. She got out when standing by the car and I walked when I walked up. She and the car were blocking my way. Your little sister is a mess, Mom said. She thinks you're never coming back. Good, I told her. I'm not. They didn't mean it, you know, Mom said. They didn't know what they were doing, either of them. They didn't ruin your papers on purpose. But they did. They ruined everything, and they never get in trouble for it. It's not fair. I could feel myself starting to cry again, and I hiccuped a sob. Mom bent down. Come here, she said. She pulled me into her arms, and I cried into her shoulder. I wish you hadn't stopped and yelled, but you're right. You do make lots of allowances for your sister. Your dad and I appreciate it, but sometimes we forget and take it for granted. We're sorry, too. I'm sorry, I said. I hate you, I told her, and I don't hate you. I know, sweetheart. I know. Will you come home? I sobbed again. I didn't want to give up, but I didn't really know where I was going to go or how I was going to live without my family and my home. Running away was so easy for Claudia and Jamie, but they were characters in a book, not real like me. I nodded into her shoulder. At home, Angelina, Alexis, and the dog practically knocked me down at the door. Angelina and Alexis threw their arms around me and hugged me tight. I'm sorry I moved your box without asking, Alexis said. I'm sorry I shredded your papers, Angelina said. It sounded like Dad had coached them on their apologies, but I still appreciated it. Dad hugged me, too, and told me he was glad I had decided not to run away after all. Can we print new forms for you? Dad asked. Your mom can run you by her office tonight, if it will help. Were they something to do with the school board meeting tomorrow night? Yes, I said, still sniffling, but it's too late. We made new papers for you, Angelina said. She and Alexis handed me papers where they had drawn the wobbly lines and filled them in with random words. Alexis's were full of ballet terms she had written out by herself. Angelina's were full of names like My Little Pony characters. Alexis had written in for her. I knew they were just trying to help, but it made me upset all over again. I was going to have to call Trey and tell him it was all over. If Mommy makes more, we can help you fill them out, Angelina said. No, you don't understand, I said. There wasn't any way to explain to them that the list of ponies and ballet positions weren't going to help. They have to be filled out at school, and even if Mom was able to copy a thousand of them, we would still need every kid at Shelbourne Elementary to fill it out by tomorrow at the end of the day. I suddenly got the goosebumps again, but the good kind, like R.L. Stein goosebumps. That was it. That was our answer. Could you, I asked Mom, make lots of copies tonight? Make a thousand copies? Well, yes, Mom said. We can go right now. Angelina and Alexa started jumping up and down, sensing my excitement, and the dogs yipped happily. Okay, okay, let me print one from online and we can go, I said. No, wait, I need to make a phone call first. I ran to the kitchen and called Trey to tell him what had happened. She shredded every single one of them, Trey said. He forgot he was supposed to be quiet so his mom didn't hear him. She shredded every single one of them, he whispered. 
but we needed those for tomorrow's school board meeting. The four of us can't fill all those out again in time, and by next month it will be too late. There won't be any TV crews there next time. Nobody will care about them then. I know, I told him, which is why we're going to get everybody in school to fill out them, fill them back out for us. How? Trey said. We could only fill those out when we were in the library. Even if we got library passes, we have to be in class the rest of the day. Which is why we're going to run away from school, I said, butterflies glittering in my stomach, like Claudia and Jamie in the mixed-up files. Play hooky from school? Trey asked in an excited whisper. And go where? I laughed. Where I always run away to, I told him. The bathroom. Mal <laughs> Malaria from watermelons. Trey and I explained everything to Janie and Rebecca on the bus, and we hid behind them as we came into school the next morning, making sure no teacher saw us before we slipped into the bathrooms. The girls' bathroom for me, the boys' bathroom for Trey. I scurried into the last stall, hung my backpack on the hook, and locked myself in. The day of playing hooky from school at school had begun, and from the mixed-up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frank Weller, Claudia and Jamie leave their band instruments at home and pack all their clothes and money and toothbrushes and things they'll need when they run away in their empty instrument case. I wasn't in band and neither was Trey, so we couldn't do the same thing, but we weren't staying overnight anyways. All we had packed in our backpack was a huge pile of requests for reconsideration forms my parents had printed off for me that night. Before and enough snacks to make it through the entire day. The first bell rang and I felt the first pangs of guilt for breaking the rules. When the second bell rang, the one that said I was now officially late to class, I actually shook afraid that at any moment, Detective Benwowski was going to come into the girls' bathroom with a sniffer dog and discover me. The door to the bathroom opened and I lifted my legs up and held my breath. What if it was Principal Benwowski come to look for me? But wait, did that mean I should put my feet down so I just look like a regular girl going to the bathroom? Maybe I should rattle the toilet paper around and flush the toilet? No, then she'd expect me to come out of the stall. Amy Ann, are you in here? Somebody whispered. I recognized the voice right away. It was Jana Park, the girl who called me AA. Here, I whispered, opening a stall door and peeking outside. Jana had everyone of the little house on the prairie books stacked up in her arms. Whoa, I said, you even checked out the doubles they had on the shelf? Rebecca said to, Jana told me. She said if we didn't, we might actually double up. We might accidentally double up, and we didn't have time for that. Rebecca's so smart. Okay, I said, pulling one of the requests for reconsideration forms from my backpack. Now I just need you to fill out a form for each book before you go back to class. Jana began to fill out the first form. But well, what do I say? There's nothing about bad about Little House on the Prairie. She was right. But no, that was true about all the books. I had to think like Mrs. Spencer. Better. I had to think like Rebecca. They get malaria in that one, I said. That's scary, right? And the settlers think it's because they ate bad watermelon. But that's not how you get malaria. That's deliberately misleading. That can make a kid think you get malaria from watermelons. Jana giggled and wrote it in. This was the plan. We were going to do exactly what Mrs. Spencer had done when she wanted to ban books, but didn't want to wait for the school board to say yes. We were going to check out as many books from the library as we could and then turn in requests for reconsideration forms for them all tonight at the school board meeting. Rebecca and Danny stayed on the outside, slipping notes into everybody's lockers that told them to check out books and bring them to me in the girls' bathroom and tray into the boys' bathroom. That's why we were playing hooky from school. So we could be here all day and help them fill out requests for reconsideration forms for all the books. If even half the kids at Shelbourne Elementary did it, we'd have hundreds of books banned by the end of the day. The door opened and a third grader, I didn't know, came into the, with a stack of binicula books. Is this where I go to ban books? She asked. Right this way, I told her. Let me get you a form. So hopefully this plan works and we'll see what happens next time. Thanks for tuning in, guys.